video, um, and I found a couple videos, um, of people reading poetry and speaking softly, so I thought I would read a poem. Um, Um, I found the videos to be very relaxing, so I'm gonna read The Raven uh, by Edgar Allan Poe. It's like my favorite poem, so I thought that would be nice. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, Suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. "'Tis some visitor," I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. Only this and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember it was in the bleak December, and each dying separate ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow. Faintly I had sought to borrow from my books Sorrow for the lost Lenore <laughs> For the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels named Lenore Nameless here forevermore And the silken sad uncertain rustling of each purple curtain Thrilled me, filled me with fantastic tears ever felt before, so that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating to some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, this it is and nothing more, for suddenly my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer, sir, I said, or madam, Truly your forgiveness I implore, but the fact is I was napping, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door, that I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I opened wide the door, darkness there, and nothing more. Deep into that darkness peering, long I stood there wondering, fearing, dreaming dreams no mortals ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, and the stillness it gave no token, and the only word there spoken was the whispered word, Lenore. This I whispered in an echo, murmured back the word, Lenore. Merely this, and nothing more. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning, Soon again I heard a tapping, somewhat louder than before. Surely, I said, surely that is something at my window lattice. Let me see then what there it is. And this mystery is more. Let my heart be still a moment, and this mystery explore. Tis the wind and nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter, when, with many a flirt and flutter, in there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore, not the least up business. Not a minute stopped or stayed he, but with pain of lord or lady perched above my chamber door. Perched upon a bus of palace just above my chamber door, perched and sat and nothing more. I lost my place. Then this ebony bird beguiling my sad fancy into smiling by the grave and stern decorum. Though 
thy crest be shorn and shaven, thou, I said, art sure no craven, ghastly grim and ancient raven, wandering from the nightly shore. Tell me why the lordly name is on the night's Plutonian shore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Much I marveled this ungainly fowl to hear discourse so plainly, though its answer little meaning, little relevancy bore. For we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door bird or beast upon the sculpture bust above his chamber door with such a name as nevermore. Startled at the stillness broken by a reply so aptly spoken, doubtless, I said, what it utters is its only stock and store, caught from some unhappy master whom unmerciful disaster followed fast and followed faster, till his songs one burden bore the dirges of his hope that melancholy burden bore of never, nevermore. But the raven still beguiling all my fancy into smiling. Straight I wheeled a cushion seat in front of bird and bust and door. Then upon the velvet sinking I betook myself to linking, fancy unto fancy, thinking what this ominous bird of yours but this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt, and ominous bird of yore meant in croaking nevermore. This I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing to the fowl whose fiery eyes now burned in my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining with my head at ease reclining on the cushion's velvet lining that the lamplight gloated o'er. But those velvet violet lining with the lamplight gloating o'er, she shall press, ah, nevermore. Then methought the air grew denser, perfumed from an unseen censer, swung by seraphim whose footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. <laughs> Wretch, I cried, thy God hath lent thee by these angels he hath sent thee. Respite, respite, and nepenthe from thy memories of Lenore. Quaff, O oh, quaff this kind nepenthe, and forgot this lost Lenore. Quaff the raven, nevermore. Prophet, I said, thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, whether tempter sent, or whether tempest, Whether tempest tossed the here ashore, desolate yet undaunted, on this desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted, tell me truly, I implore, is there, is there balm in Gilead, Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I implore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, I said a thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil. By that heaven that bends above us, and by that God we both adore, tell this soul with sorrow laden, if within the distant Aden it shall clasp a sainted maiden whom the angels name Lenore. Clasp a rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Be that word our sign is parting, bird or fiend. I shrieked up starting. <laughs> um, get thee back into the tempest and the night's plutonian shore. Leave no black plume as a token of that lie thy soul hath spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken, quit the bust above my door. Take the beak from out my heart and take thy form from off my door. Quoth the raven, nevermore. And the raven, never flitting, Still is sitting, still is sitting on the pallid bust of Pallas just above my chamber door. And his eyes have all the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming. And the lamplight o'er him streaming throws his shadow on the floor. And my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be.
be lifted nevermore.